You're listening to the Martin Houston Show on Tide 100.9 in Tuscaloosa. Point nine app studios in Los Angeles. Here's Eddie Garcia. In golf at the 88th Masters, Bryson DeChambeau is on top of the leaderboard at 7 under par after an opening round 65. He has a one-shot lead on Scotty Scheffler. Tee times at Augusta National were delayed two and a half hours due to weather for Thursday's first round. Now, Tiger Woods made it through 13 holes before play was suspended. He's one under par heading into today's action. He'll have to play 23 holes today in his attempt to make 24 consecutive cuts at the Masters, which would be a record he'll tee off at 10, 18 a.m. Eastern time. In NBA action, the Knicks knock off the Celtics, 118 to 109. That's back-to-back losses for the top team in the NBA. Pelicans over the Kings, 135-123. New Orleans is one game up on Phoenix for the last spot out of the play-in round. Warriors beat the Trailblazers, 100 to 92. College basketball news, Kentucky is hiring former Wildcats player and BYU head coach Mark Pope to replace the departed John Calipari. In baseball, the Royals won their seventh straight to beat the Astros, 13 to 3. Alabama, first and ten on the 12. Again, Houston. He's got a hole. He's over. Alabama touchdown. I'm just wondering if your listeners know how good a football player you were. Uh, I can still see you playing that full black, knocking those players out of the, out of the way. And I believe I could have run behind you. Martin, I can remember when we came to center and you were playing fullback up there. And I saw you in the weight room and watched the watch the work out in the weight room. At least you pick up you were strong enough to pick up the whole weight room. I wanted to fix it and I run him back so it's been back to the <laughs> <laughs> biggest, biggest mistake we ever made. The Martin Houston Show with national championship winning fullback Martin Houston. Giving you one hour of intense, hard-hitting analysis from an insider's perspective. It's time for the Martin Houston Show on your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Good morning. Welcome into the Martin Houston Show. Want to encourage you to join us live on the Martin Houston Show podcast every day from six to seven a.m. Monday through Friday. Follow and subscribe to the live stream on Facebook dot com at Alabama Sports with Martin Houston. And it's the Martin Houston Show with Martin and Xavier talking Alabama sports. We love for you to be a part of that conversation and you can do it via chat in the live stream. This is the sound of Bama Sports, your show, your team. You can also always join us by jumping in on the Alabama One Hotline at 205-342-9904. That's the Alabama One Hotline, live, local, ready to get you roll in and work you into the conversation each and every day. And don't forget, you can always, always add your comments, uh, your reactions and your questions, uh, and we'll work them into the conversation. Good morning, Jed. Good morning, Curtis Moore II. Already up and Adam with us this morning. And uh, we welcome all of you in. The playbook for today is football talk. A-Day preview, get your thoughts on A-Day. We'll look at the A-Day awards. Uh, got a list of them, uh, got all of them listed out, but got a question of the day about who will win certain ones. And then, of course, um, always of interest because it is basketball uh, season 24-7 around here, I guess. Uh, but <laughs> basketball season uh, ending, uh, the portal immediately opening, and, um, you know, we've already had Chris Parker go into the portal. Uh, Alabama currently right now, Minus Parker has 14 scholarship players and a limit of 13 scholarship players. So who's out? Who's in? Alabama has to lose at least one more player just to be in regulation. So, Somebody has to be leaving, whether it's for the NBA, whether it's for another college into the portal, uh, or whether somebody's going to hang up their cleats. I mean, their, their cleats, their hot tops. Uh, so either way, uh, we'll, we can talk about that as well. 
I want to remind you that this is the day that the Lord has made. And so let's rejoice and be glad in it. It takes a nine today to notice someone, love someone, serve someone, be the difference you want to see in the world today. Good morning, X. How you doing, sir? Good morning. Doing well. How are you? Doing well. Doing well. Um, before we get dive deep into the uh, basketball, I mean, <laughs> basketball, wow, basketball on the brain. Um, I guess that's Bob, right? Bob, well, <laughs> basketball uh, of brain. Uh, but either way, uh, any anything you want to talk about um, that we didn't get to yesterday from the roster management standpoint, maybe some guys being in town or, or whatever with A Day uh, and um, A Day coming up. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a big recruiting weekend, of course. Um, the list, I haven't seen the official list for who all is going to be in town, but it is, should be a, a wild list. But of course, basketball of course, brings some more roster management news already. And Bama will at least be down to that number 13 now. Who's out? Rylan Griffin I, has I, entered the transfer portal. Crazy. Good move, bad move. Uh, um, I, Ryan averaged almost 12 points a game this year. I mean, he, he hit 39% from three. You hate to see him go for sure. Wow. Uh, that, I, I think Bradley made a mistake last year going to Arizona. Even though I think he had a good one. I think he'd have been such a change up for us last this past year. Um but uh Rollin hurts in the sense of defense. He was our best defensive player, in my opinion, consistently. Uh so that 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 hurts a little bit. Are you surprised by that? I am. I, I definitely thought he would have come back um to Bama this year. Uh and been a key contributor, especially because we don't know who else is leaving as far as draft, other young guys going into the portal. So you look at if Bama was to lose Sears or, and Griffin, and, um, Griffin and, um, Nelson, he, in my opinion, he would have been the lead for the offense. Well, the, which does that tell you anything? Um, th- didn't we already take a guard out of the portal? Yes. Houston so, Mallet. Yeah. So does that does that tilt your hand one way or the other when it comes to basketball potentially? Um Griffin being out, Parker being out, both guards, uh we added a guard. You would still think with that being said, um Gr- Griffin would still be here, but is the fact that right cell and Sears potentially back communicating something to Griffin and I don't know, man. Wow. Uh, yeah. that, that was, and, that and was, that's what it made me think when I first heard it. I was like, if he's leaving, what does that mean for right cell and, and Sears coming back? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, I mean, that, that, that would be my first thought. But anyway, Justin, you have any thoughts on, uh, any tea leaves on uh, or, or prophetic insight on uh, the Griffin move? Surprise or, or what? I was I was made privy to some rumors yesterday afternoon mm-hmm. about Rylan Griffin potentially leaving. Nothing to solid to report on. Um, it hurts. I think it's a major blow. It, it's very yeah. strange and it makes me hate the college athletic. I don't know how it is now. I mean, I can't believe that you're you're about to be a potentially top five preseason team and you're a starter on that team and you're going to leave. I, I think the only reason would be, of course, if it's for family or something like that, I can completely understand. But outside of, of that, uh, my mind is blown a little bit, Martin. He's from Texas. Is, 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 is somebody calling mama home? And, you know, is it one of those Baylor 
or um, taxes. Somebody out there that thinks uh, uh, maybe w- watch this. You know where now, now guys, I don't like this. I don't like this. But you know what would be a good fit? Now, I'm just playing devil's advocate here, okay? Not a Bama fan, purely sports fan. Him being from Texas, you know where uh be a good fit for him? And he probably would absolutely be a superstar. Texas I mean. Mm-mm. That Well, that, that that's true, but different conference. Houston. Houston. Ooh. Rollin Griffin at Houston. Let that sink for a second. He can play defense the way they play defense. But he would be an offensive superstar. And he would. Just, they he just would, uh, lost their he, guard to the draft. Yes. Yeah, they just lost the best defense. They just lost the player of the year in Houston. Oh, man, I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> I would hate to see <laughs> I would hate to see, uh, Samson, coach, uh, uh, I would hate to see Houston with an offense if they keep up their defensive intensity. So, man. Whoo. So that, 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 that could be some of what you're talking about too. Uh, Justin is that he's going closer to home. Um, he's from Dallas, but a trip, uh, you know, uh, maybe being from Texas makes the family feel a little closer. I know Houston, the state of Texas, uh, you can be in the state of Texas and be halfway, be the equivalent of driving halfway across the country. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but if he gets more money, right? And then he can help uh, offset those ex- travel expenses. Um, then Houston becomes, I, I'm just thinking about fit, fit. If if you took the way he plays defense, wow, mm, and put him on that team, uh, they're going to the they go into the title game if they get some offense, and that's scary. Wow. So anyway, that hey, that's why we talk about it. I, I I'm 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 just like you, uh, Justin and X. I don't like it for myself, but. If that that happens, can you blame the kid? If you're looking for fit, is there? It, it, he may be a better fit, um, but I think it's a big blow to Alabama, not just because of his offensive productivity, because there was a couple games that he was like the man, but his defensive uh, productivity uh, in the Final Four. And maybe that's what maybe maybe he he feels like if he goes somewhere else that plays better defense, which Alabama has traditionally done as well, but not this year. Um, Rodden Griffin could have been, and I'll close this and let you guys respond. X, just think if Rodden Griffin had been on a traditional Alabama offense, I mean defensive team under Nate Oates, with the way he played defense and his offensive skill set, he'd been an offensive minded Herb Jones. Yes. Yeah. And so where would his stop be? Be through the uh, roof, he'd right? Be a, he'd be a yeah. first round pick. Yeah. And you, you think that has anything to do with it, Justin? Trying to find that place where his defense is, it, it, it fits with everybody else and he's still an offensive juggernaut? Yeah. I mean, I could see that. It just makes me even more frustrated the more we talk about it. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we're all in the same boat, man. Uh, um, and anyway, uh, we, we can talk about it really quick, uh, on the other side, but Kentucky getting turned down kind of reminded me of the day when, uh, Bama was looking for a coach. You don't like to be turned down when you think you're the top of the cream of the crop. No one tells you no. Well, Kentucky's found themselves in that boat. You know they're at least going after their second option, possibly third or fourth option. And the longer it lingers, uh, the worse it gets, unless you're patient enough like Mal Moore was to wait on the guy you want. And is Billy Donovan that guy? Are they willing to wait and risk it all like Mal Moore did? It looked bad for Alabama, and we had to take it in the media for a while. But 
the wait paid off. C.J. Watson saying, hey, see Rollins leave. He's a defensive dog. Love watching him play. He was our lockdown guy. Houston would be an ideal landing spot for his skill set. We'll keep the conversation rolling. We'll transition to some A-Day um, as well. <laughs> oh, man. Thanks for that news, X. We'll be back on the other side right here on your home for Alabama Sports Talk 100.9 and 1230 AM WTBC. Tide 100.9 traffic. Tuscaloosa traffic now from the Townsend Nissan Traffic Center. Traveling along westbound 2059 from Skyland Boulevard to the 359 interchange. That's an eight-minute drive. The drive along McFarland from airport across the river down to Jack Warner. Eight minutes there as well. And you're at 10 minutes on southbound 69 from Midlands. And Nissan is your number one dealer. And they'll beat any written offer or pay you $1,000. Keeping you number one keeps Townsend Nissan number one. See dealer for details. 365 24-7. You'll find road and utility crews, tow truck, law enforcement, and first responders working along Alabama's roadway. We're making improvements and helping our communities stay connected. We're working hard to make sure you're safe on the road. Now we need your help to make sure we're safe too. Alabama's move over law requires you to move over a lane when you see flashing lights on the roadside. The cigarettes. But she just grabs the gum off the counter. Stand up to cancer and rally want you to reduce your risk for cancer. Go to takeahealthystand.org. Are you receiving unemployment? Your benefits could be at risk. Here's how you can protect yourself and your benefits. Never respond to mail notifying you of a false claim in your name. Never answer a text message asking you to verify your account. And only respond to official Alabama Department of Labor's social media pages. Report fraud at labor.alabama.gov slash fraud. Brought to you by Lowe's. Shop Klein Tools in-store and online today. Because Lowe's knows tools. Lowe's knows pros. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. A beautiful spring day today with a sunny sky, the high 70. Clear tonight, the low 45. For the weekend, a warming trend. Lots of sunshine tomorrow and Sunday. The high tomorrow, 79. The high Sunday afternoon at 83. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. It's 44 degrees in Tuscaloosa. Into Tide 100.9 for more of the Martin Houston Show with Martin Houston and X's and O's Sports Xavier Houston. Welcome back into the Martin Houston Show with Martin and Xavier. We're a one hour broadcast, so we try to keep. Uh, some of the uh, commercials down, and uh, I appreciate you guys helping me do that. And you can do that by showing support. If you tune in on the live broadcast on the podcast, uh, you can give stars. Uh, that's the way you, as one of the viewers, chatters, and fans, can help support the program. Uh, show support. Give stars. Go to facebook.com forward slash FB stars. That's FB stars. At facebook.com, uh, each star represents, uh, money that allows me to keep doing this, uh, and doing it at a high level. And I appreciate your support. Uh, X, um, wow. Uh, so much to get to. We're going to try to get to some, fo- we are going to get to some football. Let's go ahead and get a couple of basketball questions out of the way. Um, and then we'll move on, uh, from there. J Rob, you're in. Um, with this, uh, it's a free for all Friday. So what you got for us, man? Happy Friday, roll tide, everybody. Uh, happy Friday, roll tide. Man, did you have to do that, X? I mean, <laughs> man. Believe me, when I, 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 when I saw it, I was shocked. Wow. Man, it, it, it's, it's, it shouldn't be surprising in this day and age. But we have a potential of losing four guards off of that final four team just by, like a center snap. And it's, you know, that's, that's shocking. But, you know, he rebuilt the team from, you know, what we lost last year. So, and, and, and he could surprising. be back. He could be back. I mean. Yeah, he could be. He could be. I hope so. Hopefully we can entice him to come back. And, you know, all the guys that can come back, come back. That's. That's what the hope is, because you know the older the guys are, the better your team is. I think. I think 
sometimes when you have all them old older guys, they're they're they bond better, and they you have a bunch of leaders on the team, and I think that works out better for the team. But uh, man, that's surprise. That's not surprising, like I said. But uh, a day tomorrow, I I'm looking not only for you know the, to look at what what the offensive line looks like. And look at uh, – I want to look at how organized the team is. Hey, do they look like they know what they're doing? Do they look like they're getting it? Do they look like they're they're gelling? And uh, that's that's one of the main – some of the main things I'm going to be looking for tomorrow. Well, I can tell you from uh, having seen them in a scrimmage, um, up close and personal, uh, they seem to be on point um, without a lot of uh, – uh, lag time, they seem to get get to it pretty good, uh, J. Rob. So um, I, I think they'll be fine in that sense. Um, but uh, it is going to be interesting to see how he does a day. You know, um, will will it be you know competition against competition? Will it be you know uh, defense against offense? Uh, will he split the teams up? Um, and and go that way. I think he Crimson talked about that. Crimson versus white. I think. Well, I think he. The way he did scrimmage was defense got points, offense got points. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, the, which is a little different than than what we've done. You, will, will, hey, will they have the stake in Beanie Weenies? What what will be his uh, reward? Did he talk about that? I have not seen it. So thanks, J. Uh, thanks, J. Rob. Appreciate you, man. Hey, uh, hey, real quick, J. Rob, who you got winning the MVP? Is J. Rob there? Maybe gone. Oh, All sorry, right, he, he's gone. That's uh, that's okay. No, no problem. Uh, next, let's get to Joey. Joey, you're on with Martin and Xavier on Album One Hotline. It's a free for all Friday. What you got for us? Yeah. Good morning, gentlemen. I saw a story yesterday, and I don't, I haven't heard anybody else talk about it. Uh, Arkansas does not have a basketball team. Have you seen that? <laughs> I saw I saw where somebody said something to that effect, but I didn't read the article. It said nine of their players were seniors and are gone, and the others on the team have all but put in for the transfer portal. There's no players. <laughs> have you I'll, seen that? I, well, well, I saw that um, Cal said that they didn't have any. They did. They didn't have a team. I didn't. Like I said, I didn't read the specifics. <laughs> but that's what it was. That nine of them were seniors and they're all gone, and. Uh, the others, the few that were left, went to, are in the transfer portal right now. So he starts with a clean play. Not necessarily. You know what that is, right? Go ahead. Why, why would you? Why would you stay there when a new coach is coming in, and then let him recruit the guys he wants, and you have no say or play? I love. I, I love the portal being used in this case. Maybe. You see what I'm saying? Like, like I, I I'm okay. I, I hate that that that. Um, and, and it's the same thing with Alabama football, except for in basketball, man. It's really easy to lose your spot. <laughs> um, like when Alabama left, I didn't have a problem necessarily with guys flirting with the portal when there's a new coach. I have a problem if you don't give the coach a chance. That makes sense. Um, like Kyle's gonna have to re-recruit those guys. But what type of player does Cal usually recruit, uh, Joey? One and done. So if you're at Arkansas and you're not a one and done, what are you going to do? You're going to make him re-recruit you, right? Yep. Could Griffin be going? I mean, he could. That could be a place for him to go. Um, I think Arkansas might be closer to Dallas than Houston is, so – (laughs) <laughs> um, but but yeah, that that's definitely a possibility. Um, but I, I, all I'm saying is, I think that that those guys that win the portal, they're gonna make him re-recruit them, and either they will get more money to stay at Arkansas, or they'll get money to go somewhere else. Unfortunately, that's the state of college basketball. All right, thanks, Martin. I just thought I'd bring that up. 
Yeah, it's an interesting, interesting take there. Pat, you're in with Martin and Xavier on the Allen One Hotline. What you got, man? Man, let's leave this thing to football. Man, I, I <laughs> you can try, Pat. This. Huh? You can try, man. All right, let's do it. Man, first off, man, uh, uh, he had uh, people yesterday on the afternoon show with a bearded wonder. Uh, and the bearded wonder... Uh, the, his, uh, prognosticator and, uh, one of the gambling guys from Mountain Vegas said that your quarterback, Mr. Milrow, is not a dead lock because he is, does not exactly fit Kalen DeBoer's scheme of wanting to throw, 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 throw. No word. <laughs> Why do we say he's going to throw, 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 throw? Mate, stable if he's got, why would he throw, 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 throw? But that's his, that's his, uh, uh, MO, motive of operandi, what do you call it? That's his state, that's his plan. Uh-huh. Well, maybe that's, the, maybe he's a good coach that does what his quarterback does best and what his offense does best. They ran the ball. Uh, um, a decent amount. They just do it a lot more with Penix. You also, you also might want to go look at how Michael Penix played at Indy and um, when DeBoer was the offensive coordinator. Yeah. Did, 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 hey, did, X, was, was, was DeBoer the coach at Indiana when the kid from UAB went up to Indiana? No. Nah. It'd be interesting to see. Was him or... You know who I'm talking about? The I'm running back? Jordan Howard. The yeah. running back. Yeah. Nah. Okay. All right. So it's but it's just an interesting, interesting process, Pat. I I I, I that tickles me uh when I hear guys say that. What has what has said that Jalen can't throw the ball more? You you would think that last year, based on your comment, Pat, that based on if a coach is going to just play to a certain style, then we should have been running the ball a lot more last year with Mill Road than we did. Sure. Right? No, so doubt, I, no, 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 no doubt. His, Jalen's strong suit is running the ball. He's the fast, was or pretty close to being the fastest guy on the team. Yeah. But uh, uh, according to Cole's mama, Cole's the fastest guy they got. According but, to who? Uh, I'm making a joke. I'm making a joke, Martin. Oh. That I'm, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about our wide receiver, Cole, out of uh, Oklahoma. His mother said he was fast. Oh, okay. but, uh, <laughs> but but anyway, oh, hey, 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 let's go back. Let's go back to uh, uh, what my guest and my call is. Hey, I want to know: Is my quarterback the gunslinger? Is he going to have two t- uh, touchdown passes? He's, he's he's saying, according, according to what I'm hearing, all four quarterbacks, and are all of them are capable of starting with this team, is what he said yesterday in his interview. I'm talking about the coach, and that uh, that all of them are absolutely doing a fantastic job. And uh, but I want to know is the marshal gonna have? at least two touchdown passes tomorrow. And are we going to completely fill that stadium and turn people away? And if so, uh, do I need to get over there at 11 a.m. in order to sit by you up in the press box? I don't because think I- we're going to have to turn anybody away uh answer that question. I think it'll be a full stadium. I think it'll be a lot of a lot of people show up for a lot of reasons, Uh um, and, and most of all, to be a part of this new era. Number two, Pat, if you're talking about Lonergan, he may have two touchdowns, but it, it, I don't know that it, it will matter in the sense that he may be doing it against third team competition. Um, because Lonergan is a really good player, um, uh, and he's probably better than most of the guys on the third team. So, um, um, he's a guy that, that I think has some, some good skill sets, but I will not be surprised if he's not here come fall. Yeah, he, he's, running, he's, 
That's- he's running fourth team right now, and I mean, um, to your point, Jalen is improving in this system. Ty is Ty is improving in this system, and Austin Mack is improving in this system, and Lonergan is improving in this system. Well, he's the fourth guy in that rotation. So that, that that's my thoughts there. All right. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Pat. Appreciate you, man. But, but we're going to be, it's going to be full. So you saying I need to get there at 11 a.m. tomorrow. Well, you can't get there. I won't get there at 11 a.m. I'll take a seat wherever I can get there. Well, if I, if I had your press credentials and, and who you are, hey, I wouldn't get there till three o'clock. Well, okay, hey, but I don't. <laughs> I don't either, Pat. Hey, who you got for MVP, Pat? Hey, M- MVP tomorrow. Hey, my quarterback. I'm, I'm, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going with my quarterback having the most production, Dylan Lonergan. All right, wasted vote. All right, thanks, Pat. <laughs> Roll tide. We'll be back on the other side to keep the conversation rolling. Hey, go check out uh, Billy's Cooking Restaurant. That's Billy's Cooking Restaurant. Uh, located in Holt, Alabama, 205-632-8617. You can also order from uh, DoorDash. We'll be back in. Shop Klein Tools in-store and online today because Lowe's knows tools. Lowe's knows pros. Serving part-time in the Army National Guard has led to a lot of firsts for me. It paid for me to be the first person in my family to go to school. That education got me to the first day at my dream job, which I can still hold while I serve part-time. That job and the home loan benefits I got from the Army National Guard helped me buy my first house. I also... slash Rise Golf 24 to register your foursome for a great day together, playing golf, mingling with Alabama celebrity athletes, and helping the children at Rise. The Alabama Securities Commission protects you from financial fraud. Anyone asking you for investment money must be licensed. You're careful with your money. Fraudsters aren't. Before you invest, call our hotline at 1-800-222-1253 to verify the licensing of the person making an offer and the product. Don't lose your heart. Paid for by the Investor Protection Trust and brought to you by the Alabama Broadcasters Association and this station. This report is sponsored by Stand Up to Can. Welcome back to the Martin Houston Show, the sound of Bama sports. Your show, your team, on your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Welcome back into the Martin Houston Show with Martin and Xavier. Go check out alabama1.org, alabama1.org. All your financial needs can be met there, whether you're looking to get a great loan on auto, boat, wreck, ATV, um, recreational vehicles, etc. We have longer terms and lower payments, plus we'll give you 60 days no pay, so you can get a uh, but a uh, payment that fits your budget as well as keep the first two payments in your pocket, helping you to put a little bit of money back. And that's what we need right now. Don't get caught up in the low interest rates when they only give you uh limited months to finance your payment. It's still going to be higher than it will be with Alabama one's lower payments via longer term. So check it out at Alabama one dot org. All right, uh, we're back at it. Um, keep the conversation rolling. Got a couple callers, um, that we need to get to. Uh, Bill in Texas didn't want to be on the air, but said, uh, I'm not going to 8A this year because I'm tired of seeing Martin Houston play flag football before the game starts. <laughs> I never played flag football. <laughs> that's pretty good, Bill. <laughs> oh man, uh, that's pretty funny. Uh, uh, but of course there is the, the flag football game, um, uh, that, that happens, uh, but I'm not a part of that. So 
if uh if you don't want to see greatness uh in action you don't have to cuz I won't be there. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, I'm supposed to laugh. Yeah, y'all, y'all supposed to laugh at that. Yeah, okay. Since nobody else laughed, I'll, I'll make my own laughter. What about that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Justin, you have to you have to tell guys like that they have to go on air. They can't cut me down like that and not go on the air. So, uh, no, Martin, he was saying uh, he was saying he's tired of not seeing you. He, he, oh, he, he said wants, not seeing me. Yeah, he wants to see oh, you. Oh, I misread it. Oh my goodness, he wants. Well, he won't get to see greatness this year. <laughs> uh, either so neither was, ah he wants to see me play flag football that's right because I've never played in the game um maybe next year uh you guys can talk me into uh going out and playing next year I'll be 55 this next year but yeah, uh, well they, they have an ambulance on standby right so you know you'll be good hey listen you want me to tell you what position I'll play if I play what's that deep safety <laughs> <laughs> you know what that means, right, uh, Justin? Hey, I know your first step's always gonna be walking backwards. It ain't no. But, hey, <laughs> hey, that's a snap. I'm going back, right? Oh man, that would be funny. I, okay, Bill, uh, Bill, if 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 you if you'll come to next year's game, I might play in the flag football game. So I apologize that I misread Bill's. Message. Let me see. I'm not going to 8A this year because I'm tired of not seeing Mark Houston play flag football <laughs> for the start of the game. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh man, I love. Hey, listen, I love you guys, man. I love, I love this show. I love the interaction uh, with the fans and everything. It's uh, free for all Friday. It's the Sound of Alabama Sports. Your show, your team. And with that said, we got Alan and Philip on the online. Alan, you're in. Uh, it's a free for all Friday. What you got for us? Is Alan still there? Going once. Yeah. Going. I'm here. All right, Alan. You, you go I'm ahead. Here. We got. You. Okay. Uh, you know, more, let's revisit something we talked about yesterday, and it just came to. I saw more than yesterday. Now, Otani is saying that they stole fifteen million dollars from him. Once again, when you and Xavier, please tell me how somebody took $15 million from you and you don't know about it. Not $3 million, it's 15 now. And you don't know a thing about it and your, and your entourage, your team don't know nothing about it. Can y'all two please explain to me how that happened and he him not know anything about this? Yeah, I mean, uh, it happens to guys all the time. Mm. They, tell you that they're inv- they tell you that they're investing. <laughs> Your money exactly. it, it happens, but it doesn't happen by the interpreter. It happens by the agent. It happens by those who who should be investing the money. That's that's what that's what Alan is communicating there, X, is, is you have an interpreter. interpreter. Yes, you have an interpreter who is taking the fall for now taking $15 million to pay off gambling debts or something like that is what, so I, that I, I don't know. I, I haven't followed the story completely, but, but that's what I'm saying. X is, is yeah. I, I mean, I've known guys who have lost their shirts because they didn't understand finances and they gave that responsibility over to someone and the person they gave, you know, air quote, power of attorney to stole their money. But supposedly this, correct me, Alan, if I'm wrong, this is the interpreter that supposedly stole all this money, and he's the one that's pleading guilty. Martin, I'm looking for this guy to come up dead within the next six months to a year uh, before, his story, before his story gets told, because it's going it's to get bigger and bigger. I do believe that somebody's going to keep going. The media is not going to stop because there's got to be people like me and other people that's that's looking like this. Even you looking at it like, wait a minute, how is this happening without nobody knowing about it? You know, somebody else is somebody else is going to take the blame also. Yeah, uh, you think it's his agency or you think it's his, his show A? Well, I think it's going to be. Uh, it got to be his agency. I mean, it's got to be. His, I think it's going to be his agency. Uh, I mean, me personally, I think he had something to do with it, and they have put it all on him. I mean, you just don't, you know, you just don't, 15 million, you know, 
I mean, that ain't like a hundred thousand to him. That's that's fifteen yeah. million dollars. <laughs> And I don't, I have no idea. Like I said, I'm not following the story closely and I'll end with this. Uh, but you know, he's admitted to putting money on other sports. Exactly. Now, none of us, now, none of us bet on baseball there. None of us bet on baseball in the United States. It was on other sports. But no matter what, still it's $15 million coming up. But my point, my, my point is he, he did, he did some things that, you know, um, he would have had to be controlled in. And that's the thing about gambling. You no, know, I don't care how much money you got. Gambling does something to those, uh, um, endorphins and excitement and the adrenaline and it can become addictive and your amount of money doesn't matter. You know, I, I I'm not trying to, and I'm not going to go deeper on this, but a lot of people think that that's why Michael Jordan left basketball. It, it, I mean, it, it's just, you know, it was a lot of bad. We forget about the bad blood and the bad stuff that happened all around Michael Jordan when he left baseball with his dad and et cetera. So those guys throw away money for you and I. You know, $15 million for Otani is like $100 for us guys. So, um, yeah. So just FYI. Thanks, Alan. Appreciate it, man. You got anything else? You got an MVP for the 8 game? Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go with the I'm gonna go with the quarterback that came from Washington. Okay. Because he knows because he knows the system a little bit more than Milro, and you know I just think I just think he'll. Uh, I don't think he'll be the starting quarterback, but I do believe he's gonna be in the mix when it comes to fall. Um, I just think he has a you know he has, he has a little bit of leg up on everybody, so I just think it'll be you know he'll be the MVP. Alan, I almost said wasted vote on you, but I'll, I'll give you some grace. I didn't give Pat any grace when he said longer. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> Roll Tide. Philip, you're in on the Alabama One Hotline. Uh, it's a free for all Friday. What you got, man? Hey, good morning. Um, I was going to tell you, Martin, I, I'm looking at the basketball roster that's remaining uh, for next year. Um, Pringle, Waggy, Nelson, Sears, Whitesell, Walker, Stevenson, Cosby, Diabate. There's not a single player that I can that I can look at and say with certainty that they will be back next year. Not a single one. No. Hmm. I I think uh I, I think Wrightsell is back pretty sure. I think Walters is back pretty sure. I think Diabate is back. Um, the, the, the question is for me to answer is I thought Pringle was out of eligibility. He's not. To me, it's easier to say the two guys that I think are gone. Unless Wagyu gets a lot of, uh, beef on him, I think he's gone and, and he's going to have to prove something. And I think that the same goes for, for Pringle, um, I think that that's where they're going to go in the portal to get some type of center that better fits. You're either going to have to be a rim protector or um, a a threat around the three. You can't be caught in the middle, I think, on this Alabama team. Uh, your thoughts really quick, and then, X, I'll let you respond, and we need to get the break. Philip. But, you know, Alabama lost six last year, and, and one of those, unfortunately, I'm including in the count, is, is Miles. Nobody could help that. But that's six guys. And then this year, it's, it's Griffin and Parker, which I don't understand Parker at all. I, I just can't get that out of I don't understand it. And then we lost another guy that we had. I can't even remember his name that left Alabama and went to Georgia. I don't even know what he did at Georgia this year, if anything. He was a guard. But so they've lost nine players in two years, and heck, it isn't over with yet for this year. I felt like that. I said three weeks ago to some of my friends and family, I thought we'd lose four to five players. Oh wow, X. Yeah, I mean, when 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 it comes to the guys that have left this year, I'm not. Chris Parker was didn't touch the court this year. He redshirted. He not saying that he's a bad player by any means. Plus, he's had a three inch growth spurt since he's been here. So, I mean, there's that aspect of it. But he – I don't know if he's a loss. I think we we hope he's a loss if he goes somewhere else and and shows out. But 
But I mean, I think most of the guys end up back, like especially the young guys. And you look at the, we have three really good freshmen coming in, two guys that were McDonald All American players. So we'll we'll lose a couple more guys, but I think we'll also go into the portal and grab some needed positions. You know, depending on who leaves, but we do need a big man for sure. Yeah, thank thanks, Philip. Appreciate it, man. Um, thank you, sir. You know, Thank you. And the guy that I, I forget his name, but I know who you're talking about that went to Georgia and Curtis Moore remind us that he was from Georgia. We'll be back on the other side. We'll get Mike um, in on the conversation. Mike from Opelika talking a day. And then we'll uh, give you who we think will be the award winners. Uh, we'll name a couple of, of big guys, more convers. I mean, a couple of the awards and who we think will win them. We'll be back in just a moment to wrap up the, this edition of the Martin Houston show. Tide 100.9 traffic. Tuscaloosa traffic now from the Townsend Nissan Traffic Center. We always hope for the best on the Friday morning drive in particular, and we do seem to be getting it so far. You're moving along really well into and out of the area, so let's hope that doesn't change a bunch as we move along here this morning. 2059 from Foster's out to Cottondale, the drive along McFarland, passing our Blurling Wallace down to U of A and I-20 beyond. You're in good shape, posted speeds into and out of the area so far. With your Tuscaloosa traffic now, I'm Ray Romero. Here's what's trending on the Tuscaloosa Thread. Good Friday morning, Governor Ivey a warning almost 6 million in grants to agencies that help low-income residents decrease their energy costs by weatherizing their home. 398000 will go to community service programs of West Alabama for residents in Bibb, Fayette, Green, Hale, Pickens, Lamar, Sumter, and Tuscaloosa counties. Walker and Perry counties fall under other organizations. Priority is given to people with disabilities, elderly, and low-income households with children. Click TuscaloosaThread.com for more local news. On Hartley Town Square Media, Tuscaloosa. Weekday mornings at 6 a.m., the Martin Houston Show. Join us for a Monday edition of the Martin Houston Show as we'll add Kenny and Smith third to the conversation. We'll talk with you and him about Alabama's A Day game, what you thought, who won the awards, as well as we'll keep an eye on the Bama basketball roster and see who's in and who's out. Those conversations and more right here on your home for Alabama sports. $15 gift card when you buy five or more quarts of Edge or Edge High Mileage Full Synthetic. Only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Claim based on Sequence 3 H test versus API SP test limits. It's time for the Martin Houston Show. With the same hard-hitting, no-nonsense approach in which he played the game. Martin will take you inside the locker room, down on the field, and across the goal line with his in-depth analysis. Welcome back into the Martin Houston Show with Martin and Xavier. We got Mike from um, Opelika we're going to bring in in just a moment. Reminding you uh, that this weekend is going to be a great time uh, at Harvest Church. Uh, this is Harvest Church Christian, uh, I mean, two-minute warning. Saran so Stacy is going to be ministering at the church. He's coming into town for a day, and uh, so he's going to be at Harvest Church um with us on Sunday so invite you to come out and be uh, a guest with us uh to hear Saran minister uh the word at Harvest Church starting at 10 a.m for worship time and remember at Harvest Church we love God love people we love the opportunity to love on you but uh definitely help get the word out man Harvest Church HC Tuscaloosa uh, dot com is where you can find out more information online. If you can't join us in person, join us via the live stream. You can find that on YouTube and under uh, on Facebook, HC Tuscaloosa or Harvest Church Coker. All right, Mike, you're in uh, with Martin and Xavier talking a day. What what you got, man? Well, I wanted to ask y'all: Are y'all ready for overreact? In Monday, <laughs> you, know, you know it's coming. Uh, everybody's going to ask for an interception, even though the defense has seen every formation and every route a hundred times in practice and the other scrimmages. But heaven forbid, Mill Rofo an interception, and man, it's going. Ooh, I feel sorry for y'all Monday. 
<laughs> oh, my. Mike, you just made my day, my weekend. You made that. Hey, Justin, we need to figure out how to crop that. That may be the call of the year. <laughs> <laughs> that is so good, Mike. And you're so right, man. Oh, man. That was great. <laughs> Michael, that tell is you. On huh? three, when he announced that it's going to be offense versus defense, there's people all over there. Just dogging him. How dare him go away from, you know, ones versus twos? But people don't realize in the day of transfer portal, if you're labeled a second teamer, when's the transfer portal open? Next week? Yeah. And Monday. you're like, man, 14 days into this, and he don't even have me. He's already labeled me a second teamer. Boom, I'm out of here. Hey, Mike, and, you know. Uh, you know, people don't get, people don't understand. Um, I, I don't, sh- when I go to scrimmages, I don't share specific details of what I see unless it's something like this. He's going offense versus defense. First team win against first team. So, so, so everybody that's out there, he, that, that's how he's tracking the score. Okay. He's tracking the score. Like if defense gets a stop, I think they get, they get a number of points. I can't remember if, it, if it's six or what. If offense scores, they get the touchdown. You know, you see what I'm saying? Like, if they make them punt, they get points. If they get a turnover, defense gets points. But the matchup will be the same. It will be Miro will be playing against the first team. It, it's just that, that the you know, in the crimson versus white is what offense wears white, defense wears crimson. So, but it still would be – it will still be a really, really good matchup, Mike, first team against first team. But you're right on the overreaction Monday. Maybe I need to redo my promo, Justin, and <laughs> call it overreaction Monday. Hey, Mike, this I think is your first time caller, man. We appreciate you. That was that was uh, spot on. You got anything else before I let you go? No, I, and I was just going to say it could be worse. You know, we could be doing Ole Miss's payday at 7-on-7. Seven a tug of war and Joey Chestnut hot dog eating contest. Well, there you go. Hey, Mike, uh, what is it like over there in Auburn country, man? Uh, they are quiet. You know, uh, they did roll Toomer's corner for the equestrian team winning the SEC championship. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike, Mike, please, please, please call back, Mike. You have nailed it. Twice already today. First time caller. We appreciate you, man. Roll tight. Thank y'all. All right. X, uh, we didn't really get to get into 8A again, but that's okay. Uh, question of the day. Who you got winning MVP, man? Uh, I'm going to go with rapid fire, one or two man. Guys. One or two guys, either Jam Miller or Justice Haynes. Uh, what, what about you, Justin? I think a big offensive performance. I'm going to go Caleb Odom. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. That ni- nice pick there. I think it's going to be Jay Miro or uh, uh, one of the running backs. Uh, the defensive back, since that's a big need area, what, who you got defensive back-wise quickly? Starting? Winning the defensive back award. Oh, um, uh, Xavier Brown. No, 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 Red Morgan. Red Morgan. Okay. What about you, uh, Jess? You, you took my pick there, X. I'll go Malachi Moore. All right. And I, I, I'm going to go with, uh, Malachi as well. Uh, and then, uh, Paul Crane is the offensive, uh, award, Paul Crane award for offensive lineman. Who you got? Uh, Booker. Booker. Who you got? Yes. I, I, the name is blanking me right now, but the guy that's playing center at the moment. Uh, Brockemeyer. Brockemeyer. Yeah. I think we actually see Booker maybe even pop out to tackle. I love that. I think uh, Booker at tackle makes us better because I think our guard play can be – you can get a younger guy ready at guard easier. So last but not least, Mal Moore, which is the leadership award. Who you got winning that one? I think that's Jalen. Jalen Milrow. Jalen Milrow, consensus. All right, guys, there's a bunch of other awards. We'll talk about them on Monday. Who do you guys have winning the, the uh, scrimmage at the A day, offense or defense? I uh, mean, it's easy for defense to win in these situations because of the way it works. 
I, I think I lean, lean that way too. So you said defense eating beanie weenie. I mean, offense eating beanie weenies. Uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll break it down on Monday. MHS 0407 piggybacking off of Mike's call. Overreaction Monday and Transfer Portal Tuesday. <laughs> we'll have those conversations and more next week. <laughs> oh man, it's A Day. It's finally here. Kayla DeBoer, uh, first A Day game. Show up and show out Bama fans and show your support for the new era of Alabama football. It's officially uh, game time on tomorrow at 3 o'clock. And, hey, for those who can't make it, watch it on television. I'm Martin Houston. That's Xavier Houston. That's Justin Jones. Thank all the callers, listeners, viewers, and chatters for being a part of the program. Remember this, trust in the Lord always. Lean not your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. And, hey, stop by Harvest Church and hear Saran Stacy minister this Sunday.